This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com, and today, as my special guest, I have the reigning Great North Wrestling Women's Champion of Canada, as you can see the title in the background. She has wrestled all over the world, all over the U.S., many other countries that I'm sure we're going to get into some of them. Lou Fisto, also known as Precious Lucy, when she started, how are you doing today? And a in a galaxy far, far away, yeah. I'm good, how are you? <laughs> Very good, well, that's when I remember you, back when you were doing that gimmick. Yeah, yeah, did you know I never, I that like wasn't my idea. Jacques Rougeau came up with the name and he changed it without telling me. I hated that name, I hated really? that name. <laughs> was he the one that actually trained you for wrestling? No, no, I was already, um, I have been two years in the business already when I met Jacques on a TV set of a Quebec TV show. Uh, we met there and then we just we just spoke and uh, ended up on the shows. How did you like working for him? He always had good crowds. Uh, what I really like about Jacques is that he was really good with the media, how to talk to the media, how to present yourself on TV. I think that's what I learned like most uh like with him like he had such it was so easy for him to get on tv and talk and sell his stuff and like he he was so confident i see and then i guess you actually eventually moved on and went on to other places yeah i mean um jock did not produce a lot of shows and there was not a lot of women wrestlers. He was not open to intergender wrestling, which is fine. But I, I felt like I can push my limits. I can. I, I really. I strongly believe that to be better, you got to wrestle against better people. And I, I, I could not do that there. Like I was like lacking entering experience, and with wrestling twice or three times a year, uh, it was not the best thing I could do to just stay there like I really knew needed to branch out and wrestle more people so yeah I left who actually formally trained you for wrestling I I started uh for a local wrestler from the city of Sorrel uh Pierre Machasso, Yves Miette uh Patrick Lewis and Eric Laroche are the first people who trained me then uh when I moved to Montreal I started training with Lanco Jack Shelley uh and from there, I trained a little bit with the Pro Brothers at ICW and ended up in Japan in 2003, where I trained under Mariko Yoshida and Akino. What was that training like? Uh, it was <laughs> very intense. We would wake up in the morning, do weight training, then we would eat, and then we would do the wrestling training. Um, I had suffered like a knee injury a few months before that that was my first big injury and one thing i really liked about japan is they they really taught me how to work around and having an injury and focus on what you can do and work with the weaknesses and, and your strength so uh there's there's a few things i could not do anymore like jumping the ropes and stuff but they uh really um push that really strong style uh, type of wrestling. And I just kept it because I, I loved it so much. Like my first love in wrestling, everything started for me with Bull Nakano and uh, Alondra Blaze. So I was already watching the Japanese woman, like Akiro Kudo, one, one of my favorites. So uh, yeah, it was like really a blessing to wrestle there because I, I feel it made me a smarter worker. Did you ever get the chance to meet either Bull Nakano or Alundra Blaze in later years? I, I did meet both of them. And actually, once in a while, uh, Medusa, she's going to send me messages on, on my social media and stuff, which is like so, like to me, it's so impressive because I was watching her on TV. And I still, I will still go back to those matches when I need some sort of inspiration or I, I, like I just need to watch like what made me fall in love with wrestling. I'll go back to those matches from, I think it was SummerSlam 94 and her uh, WrestleMania matches and stuff. So yeah, I, I, I've been blessed that I, I met both and I'm here and there in contact with, with Medusa. 
I've seen some recent pictures of Bull Nakano, and if anyone hasn't seen what she looks like now, she's turned into like a swimsuit model type body somehow. <laughs> she's she's beautiful. In Medusa too, like you look at them like beautiful women, like very um, strong, opinionated women that are like, uh, Medusa's really always like a, online. She's very present on all her social media, really still involved in wrestling, still watching it, still loving it. So uh, yeah, very great influences for anybody out there. The only thing I could never figure out about Medusa is why she went out with Greg Valentine because she's such a positive person and beautiful and he is such a like, negative, depressing person. It's such an <laughs> odd period. Uh, unfortunately, I met Greg like once or twice, but it was very, very short. So <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't answer your question. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll have to ask Medusa about that yeah. if I ever interview her. There's a fan on here that has a good question. You have one of the hardest chops and face slaps in the business. <laughs> Uh, could you talk about how you started doing those? I imagine maybe in Japan you learned that stuff. The slaps or chops, I don't know if they just like I've 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 always loved a more physical style of wrestling. I think it's always something that's been missing to women's wrestling. Like I mean, today it's a lot more present, but I remember back then a lot of people were like, ah, you know, female wrestling is hair pulling, and I was like. No, 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 no. Like, I wanted to prove that it was so much more. So I've always had that extra intensity, extra... I, I, I felt like I... Not that I wanted people to... I, how can I explain that? It, like, if you're sitting in the back of the, of the venue, I want you to feel what's going on in the match, and I want you to get invested. So I'll always add that extra little thing so you're, you, you get invested in the match. And chops are one of them. <laughs> You're one of the believable girls for inter intergender matches. There's some that, like for Tessa Blanchard and Brian Page or Brian Cage, when he's bumping around for everything, it might not always look believable. But I do support intergender wrestling. Unlike there's been a lot of people speaking out about it. It's extremely popular, and we've had Lance Storm recently say because of all this recent speaking out stuff he doesn't even believe intergender wrestling should be around anymore but have you ever had any problems like feeling sexually harassed or anything doing intergender matches well i i think like with lance storm i think a lot of people uh misunderstood i mean the the wording was maybe wrong but lance storm has trained a lot of women he's a big supporter of women's wrestling and uh, I think he was more concerned about things that he's seen in the past, like people getting thrown in matches that are not comfortable with. And I'm one of those where I've wrestled guys that clearly didn't want to wrestle me. And they beat me up so bad and stretched me just to prove me I didn't belong in there. And I, like with Lance's, um, you know, uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's seen, like, he's been the ECW, like, the girls were getting thrown around <laughs> and stuff. Um, um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was it was really tough at the beginning because uh, they thought, uh, most of the guys were like, I'm going to look stupid. I can't lose to a woman. But when intergender wrestling is so much more, like, you have to see it as, um, if you're going to the movies and you're watching Avenger and you see Black Widow kicking everybody's ass or Wonder Woman, it, you need to see it as that. And I, oh, that's one thing I have always understood about intergender wrestling. It's not for everybody. It's like it's like hardcore wrestling. Some people like it. Some people hate it. Some people call it garbage. Some people call it art because there's ways to work around with weapons and how can you tell a match and the good psychology in something that is so violent. So it, it is a hard form in a way, um, but it's not for everybody. And uh, there is, like, just like hardcore, there is bad intergender wrestling. I strongly believe that women that are involved in there should be hard-hitting, very solid. Um, and, you know, it, it's, in a way, yeah, it should be, it should it should look believable in the way. And there's a good way to do that. Um, big show. I always go back to the big show versus Rey Mysterio. 
you got the size versus somebody who's so athletic and has the speed and everything. It's how you work the match. You can make something at first that you look like that's not believable, but it becomes something really special because both people are working together and creating that magic. I see. Well, there, it's definitely popular too. I know you have numerous videos on YouTube in the millions and our most popular uh, YouTube match here on the Hannibal TV is actually an intergender match. So there is a market for it too. So there's a, there's a group of fans that certainly love it. Yeah, definitely. And it goes back to why do people love Batman and Catwoman fighting? Like it's, it all depends. You like it or you don't, but when you do, like you really, really love it. Same thing for the death match uh, fans. They're like so invested in it. They will, uh, they will go online and defend it and protect it. And they're very, very passionate. And same goes for intergender. How did you get into the death matches? You were known for your time in CCW and some of these crazy hardcore matches. It's not typical for a female, especially when you were Precious Lucy. You were actually quite innocent looking and more of a model to you. And I remember I wasn't really paying attention. And then I suddenly saw you were doing death matches. And I was just like, what the hell happened to her? Um, it it's not something I planned. It's just something that happened. I was wrestling Seth Wu in ICW. And again, intergender was kind of new. And people were like, oh, a man and a girl. And like, it, it doesn't, it didn't click for them. They didn't get it yet. But slowly, like, I mean, on TV, China was, was doing it too. So uh, in the match with Serge, it just happened. Like he, he was known as being more of a violent, typical uh, hard-hitting mean heel so we started this feud and ended up in the guardrails ended up with chairs and then cookie sheets went flying and everything so it wasn't planned and it just happened like we were so into the match and everything got so like intense and people went completely nuts like we really thought there was going to be a riot <laughs> and there was like two reactions that made me like oh i need to do this one the crowd's reaction which is like wow this is special it's like they get so invested in it i need to do more and the other one was some of the boys or even the wives was like why you do this you don't need to do this you're a girl and i was like so insulted <laughs> i was like what do you mean like i i want to be treated seriously and i want you guys to see me as and equal in the ring and i have the same training and i i'm a wrestler uh yes i might be a woman but i am a wrestler too and for me i just used it i think like looking back it was absolutely necessary to do it to prove to people that my gender didn't matter and i really wanted to show that uh, i could be as tough even tougher than the boys there's another fan question related to this on here. What title belts did you hold in CZW? It's the Iron Man Championship. Okay, I see. And how was your experience working for CZW overall? We've heard some people that felt like they were a little bit abused, and of course others absolutely loved their experience there. When, when I got there, I was more of a – of a, in the group pack, I would say, like it was more of the IWS guys, uh, me, Sexy Eddie, Frankie the Mobster, there was also Kevin Steen and Al Generico. So we were like the Canadians. Um, and I, I think at first, John Zending was running CCW back then. He'd heard about me from my matches, uh, tag team matches with Eddie. And I don't think he took me not that he didn't take me seriously, but I think he's like, okay, there's a girl doing that. It's kind of cool. We're, we're going to use her. And when I got there, he saw that I was really serious. I really wanted to succeed, and I really wanted to push my limits and do more stuff every show. And I, I think he really understood uh, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to prove. So he's been, like, so supportive right from my first match there. And – like even there, he was like, "You're going to go in the cage of death. You're gonna, you know, I'm gonna be there. We're, we're gonna have you feud with Nick Gage, which is a very established name in CCW." Um, 
And yeah, I mean, I owe so much to John Zandig because he believed in me a lot more than I did. Any favorite match in particular from your time there? Uh, I really love my match with Sammy Callahan. And I had two matches with uh, Black Cheese. He was known as Sabian back there that I really, really liked. I liked everything with B-Boy, too. Uh, so, yeah, th these matches are, like, very important to me and some of my favorites. What was the worst injury you've had from a death match? Um. I would say my back. Um, I did the King of the Death match, and in the final, I was with Necro Butcher. And there's that spot where uh, there's two open chairs, and he um, gives me a sidewalk slam on top of them. And at first, I didn't. It didn't really bother me, but then, like, my back really started to. Uh, like ache and I have hard time like walking for a while. I'm laughing, but I was not laughing back then. So I was out like seven months. Like my my back really needed a break from this one. And I mean, I've been like, I was that was 2007. So that was like over like already 10 years in the business. So I was kind of my body was like, okay, you need a break. So I took seven months off and I was able to come back and and everything was fine. But yeah, that that one really. Uh, it kept me out for a while. And Matt R is asking, how was working for IWA Mid South? Uh special. <laughs> uh, what I loved about the uh, IWA Mid South is Mickey Knuckles. I love working with Mickey Knuckles. She was, um, she was like the sister from another Mister that I was looking for because I I was the hardcore girl and. There was like nobody else pretty much doing it for the girls back then, but there was Mickey. So when we found each other um, and, and I think we created magic together, we did the finals of the queen of the death match in 2007. And um, yeah, like she's, she's been one of my favorite opponents ever since. I guess at one point you were a fan of Francine, who I'm actually appearing on her show on Friday. Do you still follow Francine after all these years? Will he is asking? I, I did. I did follow her a little bit because uh, one promoter I worked for in uh, California was going to have her on the show. I was I was hoping to meet her, <laughs> but it never happened, unfortunately. But I mean, she she was she was she's tough. <laughs> I understand at one point you met Ric Flair. How was that experience? Uh, I, I was on the same show as Ric Flair. Unfortunately, I was not able to talk to him. He came in, did his signing, and he left, and I was so bummed. I was like, I was so on the same show as Ric Flair, and I, I didn't get to talk to him, didn't get picture, nothing, shake his hand. So, no, I, I, yeah, I was on the same show, but I never met him, unfortunately. I had a fan question, but I, I often wondered this myself. You have very thick, strong legs. <laughs> that from years of doing squats starting in Japan, or are you just naturally built like that? No, I'm, I'm naturally built like that. I've always had like a strong lower body, and now it's getting even worse because I have a personal trainer, and because my knees are – week from uh well they're not anymore <laughs> because my legs are so strong but uh i'm training i'm training a lot with very heavy weights now just to make sure i i, I can stand and kick good and I, i've never felt as strong as i do right now actually and but no from the start it's more of a natural built always been thick <laughs> you're mentioning you're you're lifting pretty heavy now for example what are you doing on the leg press squat and deadlift uh, the, the squat yesterday, well, the ax squat, I have like, it was 10 plates. So getting there. <laughs> At one point in time, you were doing this super hardcore anime character with Pegaboo or Pegaboo mm -hmm. and that, which was a little anime doll. How did you come up with that gimmick? Uh, the anime, anime is something I was inspired by when I went to Japan because they were everywhere uh, in publicities or everywhere. So, and I always loved the fact that they, um, 
they were so cute yet so violent when they were fighting. So that's the the idea I wanted to bring. And for Pegaboo, um, Ring of Honor came to Montreal for a show and they wanted me to wrestle Daisy Hayes, which was a baby face. And with the anime, I was a baby face also, but they were like, you need to be healed. So I spoke to Dave Prezak from Shimmer back then because Shimmer was closely working with Ring of Honor and the fans were kind of following both promotions. And I'm like, what What can I do? Should I change completely my gimmick because it's too bubbly to be a baby face? He's like, no, he's like, use it because people know you that way, but find something so you can tweak it and make it evil. So Peggy actually was inspired from Wednesday Adams in the Adams family movie. She has a doll and she looks at her brother and she removes the head just to creep him out. And I was like, this is cool. <laughs> so I got a doll from Zellers back then and I made her own clothing with some of my socks. <laughs> and um, yeah, the idea was like, I, I was the anime, but I was hearing the doll talking so i kind of look weird and and uh um kind of crazy and i remember i went to the match started and i went to daisy a's and i'm like this is pegaboo and she doesn't like you and i popped her head and put her in her head and, and she's like oh what the hell and then i hit her so that was the idea with pegaboo the the thing i was not expecting is that the doll was so over, there was like Pegaboo chance. <laughs> so I got stuck with her for five years, <laughs> but it wasn't planned. It was supposed to be a one-time thing. So you did have one match for, for Ring of Honor there. Lots of fans asked me, and I know you don't have the answer to this any more than I have the answer to this, but there's been women that aren't as legendary as you, aren't even close to as skilled as you, and you do have an excellent look. You haven't been in uh, Ring of Honor other than maybe a few appearances or signed to any of these companies, and there's like five television companies now. But because the fans asked, I got to ask you, do you know any particular reason why? Because it doesn't make that much sense. Uh, there's, there's one promotion, WWE. I know why, uh, and I've been vocal about it. There's somebody there that doesn't want me there and will do everything. So I'm not going. And I made my peace with that. I mean, it's, it, I know from somebody from the office. So that's why I've never said a name and I never, cause that person trusted me with the information. And, um, so WWE, that's the reason for any other promotions. I honestly, uh, I've been, I've been, contacting some of them i got replies but never anything came out of it and why i honestly don't know because i think i could bring so much to any promotions i have a lot of experience i can work any style i can work baby face or heel i can uh i'm very good at working with new talent uh i'm, I'm really good at working with the weaknesses and uh and strength of, of my opponents and so, honestly, all I need is one shot because I know I'm, I'm so ready right now, even more than before. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm like in the best shape of my life. And I mean, uh, some people will say like, oh, she's too old. But no, I mean, there's, there's, there's a thing as women being old and men being experienced. But start, you, people have to start seeing women as experienced and uh, I, I mean, I can help with the training. I could be an agent because I love setting up matches too. Like I, I have, I can do so much more than just wrestle. So all I need is one shot from someone who will give me that 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 moment, and I know I'm gonna kill it. I am so ready for this. And WWE didn't they hire a 39 or 40 year old recently? You said you're blackballed for whatever reason there, but. They're hiring older, not that that's old, but considering mm -hmm. they used to never hire any women over 30. Yeah I'm, I'm so, yeah, I'm happy they are now. Like I, Mercedes Martinez is one of my favorite opponents. She's so good at what she does. She's, she's one of those that will wrestle anybody and make them look like a million bucks. So I'm, I'm thrilled that WWE is giving her a chance. And there's other people there that are so good. I mean, I would love um it's probably never going to happen but I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of charlotte i'm a big fan of sasha I, I love bailey their women's division is like so like so much i, I don't want to say so much better but it is 
because they have a lot more women, a lot of women from the Indies that have paid their dues and have, you know, a lot of passion for the sport. I'm thinking like girls like Candice LeRae. Um, so right now I think they're, they're doing pretty good. Uh, and although I don't follow every episode, just to see those names on the cards, uh, and of course Mercedes mostly, uh, it, it's, it's really cool for all the girls that are training and that they're not looking at age necessarily. I mean, they they are, they wouldn't, I don't think they would hire like 20 people over 35, but now it seems less important and that's, that's such a big evolution. So that's, that's a good thing. There's a fan on here, Jay-Z, asking if Tessa Blanchard is still ducking you. I wrestled Tessa. <laughs> I wrestled I was... Tessa. I, I had a great time wrestling Tessa. We had a great match in Wrestle Circus in Texas. I've also wrestled her in North Carolina and in uh, in Shimmer. Uh, but that was that was before her TNA stuff. And uh, but no, I always had a great time wrestling Tessa. What do you think about what happened with her and Impact leaving as the men's champion? I know some of it had to do with COVID, but now she probably has the most heat of any woman wrestler in the business, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. No, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I don't know all the circumstances or what's the story behind. Uh, with COVID, it's so hard to tell because, um, my God, it's it's times that nobody was – planning well i mean who can plan a pandemic um but yeah i if i i would need more information on what what led her to leave and everything to to comment but i mean i'm not afraid that she's when she's ready i know she's gonna find a job somewhere else that's for sure who was your favorite female opponent over the years hmm um there's a few uh, Mercedes again. I love working cheerleader Melissa Wesna. Uh, lately, Layla Hirsch. We had an awesome match on uh, in Germany. Um, my God, there's so many. Uh, I had a very good match with Priscilla Kelly too. Uh, but yeah, then these are the names that come to mind right now. Now, I've become friends with Taylor Hendricks over the past few months. How do you think a match with her would go in Great North Wrestling if she came to challenge you for the title? We, we wrestled once, and unfortunately, she got injured during the match because she had a problem with her, her shoulder. And, I mean, besides that, everything else went well, so I would really love to work Taylor one more time, and we can uh, do even better this time. What do you think about her kicks? Because I've been watching her kicks in matches, and I think she may have the best kicks of any woman wrestler that I've ever seen. They're, <laughs> they, they hurt. <laughs> I remember one that hit me, like, right on the on – the, wow, I can't find the name <laughs> – and um, the ribs. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah, she's a strong kicker. There's a fan on here saying you would have a good match with Jordan Grace. He probably doesn't realize that you've had a lot of matches with her. I, I uh, yeah, I think I have like three or four matches with Jordan. Just go on my YouTube page. There's like two of there, and Jordan and I were actually a team, so we we were great. I mean, as opponents, but as a team, it was even better. Now, because she's so connected in Impact, now I think she's won the Knockouts title. Could someone like her help you, a former tag team partner, maybe get hooked up with uh, Impact? I know for a fact that some girls at Impact have tried. Uh, well, they're mentioned, tried. I mean, mention my name. Uh, but it's all what they need at that moment and who's in line. And it's all about circumstances, what they need at that moment. So hopefully, I mean, one day it's going to be me <laughs> or anywhere else. Like, I'm. I, I, I think I could bring a lot to Impact or somewhere like Ring of Honor or All Elite. I, I'd like to, to wrestle the girls that are there. So, um, yeah, I, I know for sure Jordan was vocal about having wanting me there. She even, like, mentioned in a few interviews. 
Now, I don't know anything about this, but Samuel is asking Pog versus E-Y-F-O-B. Who yeah. was that dude you traded face slaps with? Who who was the uh, – was it Santana or Ortiz? One that, I, I can't remember which one. I, I think it's Santana, but I would have to watch it again. That was like two years ago, three years ago. So, yeah, it, it was at the – a big WrestleMania weekend in um, in um, New Orleans. There's a fan on here, Colonel Quail, asking, "Have you ever wrestled Awesome Kong? That would be a sick match." I did. I wrestled her in Japan. I wrestled her in Ontario, and I wrestled her while well, in the states also. Like I had quite a few matches with Awesome Kong, and yeah, pretty awesome. Actually, uh, my match against her in 2007 was a Quebec match of the year. Now, as far as that brief period of time you moved to Ohio, one of the reasons we never had you in Great North Wrestling was because you lived in the States for a while up until recently, and then we get screwed with the lockdown right after you win the title. But what brought you to Ohio? How was your experience living over there? Uh, Ohio was only there for a year. Uh, I had a job to work for uh, an arena that was presenting wrestling and metal music. So, I mean, my two favorite things. So, because I'm a graphic designer, so I had an actual graphic design visa. So that's why I went to Ohio. And then I moved to Pennsylvania for four years because, uh, I mean, along the way I met who would become my husband, who's now my ex-husband. We're still friends. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, that's how I got to Ohio because I have a degree in graphic design. Um, I actually create my own merchandise, and I do my DVDs. And uh, I actually created the, la the latest uh, Mercedes Martinez outfit she's wearing on NXT, too. I do a lot of wrestling gear. Wow, I didn't know that. I know you sell a lot of wrestling gear online, but I didn't realize you actually designed it too. How, I guess you just got into that from designing your own gear, then people contacted you. Yeah, exactly. I designed my own gear, and a lot of people were like, oh, who are des who's designing your gear? I was like, I am. So I started doing a lot of designs for other people, whether it's like T-shirt design or gear design. The designing wrestling gear is like my favorite. Now, before this lockdown, you were wrestling just about every week somewhere. Mm -hmm. As an independent wrestler myself, I know there's some really bad indie promotions and some great ones. What are some of the ones you would recommend there that are credible and actually pay and you don't have to stress about it or anything like that for indie workers out there? Uh, definitely the first two that comes to mind. Um, I mean, besides you. <laughs> like, it, it was... I, I love when you go to a place, you get your envelope, you know exactly what you're doing, and it's easy. When it's easy, it's great. And two other places are like that. C4 Wrestling in Ottawa, always very professional, great fans, great venue, everything. And FLQ in Quebec was run by Dino Marneris. She She's so on top of everything. Uh, same thing. You get there, you, you have your envelope, you know exactly where you're going, and it's very professional. Um, and she she works with uh, Smash Wrestling, also Smash. I love Smash Wrestling. Uh, very professional, easy to deal with. Like anywhere you go, and it's nothing is like nothing is complicated. You just you can go there and do your job and focus on your match, and you don't have to think about anything else. Is a great place to to wrestle at. And uh, I'm thinking also WXW in Germany. That's like my favorite place in the world. How's your experience over in Germany? I've never actually been over there. It, it's like I said, it's my favorite. The fans are, they're so loving and they, they get into the matches and they sing your name. Like if you were at a soccer game, uh, very, very loving, supportive. Um, like even if I'm in Canada, I got, I still got fans from Germany writing, uh, buying my merchandise from overseas. And, um, I always had like great matches there. I wrestle uh, Killer Kelly, Tony Storm, and Meiko Satamura, and like always, always had a great time in Germany. It's definitely one of the places you want to go. How is the sausage and beer over there? Did you get to sample it? Uh, no, I don't drink beer actually. Uh, no, I'm not really into beer. Like it's very Canadian of me. I love Bloody Caesars. <laughs> 
Well, bloody Caesars are probably more healthy than beer because probably. Of the power. <laughs> you're getting some vegetable too. Yeah. <laughs> Now, a fan wanted me to ask you, I don't know what company this was for, but he said there was a card in southwestern Ontario where the promoter bailed and disappeared and nobody on the card got paid. Could you tell that story? I guess that was one of the horror stories of wrestling. Yeah, that was a hardcore, tr hardcore road trip, I think it was called. And I can't remember the name of the promoter. Uh, mark something but yeah during the show he left something about him having a heart attack but it ended up like everybody needed to leave and there was no rides and some of the fans helped the wrestlers because some of them needed to cross to detroit to is it detroit i think so or buffalo or something to catch their flight so a bunch of fans got together to help the wrestlers but yeah a lot of people did not get paid but i will give credit to the man few weeks later, he reached out to me and he PayPal me some of my money. Uh, but I'm, I'm one of the rare, like, few that got something out of this. Now, there's another question from a fan on here. I'm going to guess it's Montreal, but he's asking what Canadian territory was your favorite? Vancouver, Stampede, the Toronto Territory. But he doesn't mention Montreal, but I'm going to guess it could have been Montreal. Um. Right now, I would say, uh, well, that's going to be surprising maybe, but Ontario has always been so good to me. I don't know if it's because I got them rid of the athletic commission, but the fans in the Toronto area or the Ottawa, like, they are so good to me. When I wrestled to the summit, which was a big female wrestling event that we had two years ago, uh, I came out and the ovation was so loud that I had to stop and just take a moment to see like, wow, this is something like the building was shaking. So I've always had such a great, great uh, relationship with my fans from Ontario. I, I, I feel almost, I get more love from Ontario than my own Quebec. <laughs> now, I didn't hear about this. How did you get rid of the athletic commissions? Um, back in 2002, uh, there was actually a regulation that stated that women and men could not be in the ring at the same time. Uh, intergender were bands and I could not wrestle men and there was no women back there. So they, I lost all my bookings. And what I did is I called the Ontario Human Rights and told them about that, that they would not let me wrestle who I wanted because I'm a woman. It's like, girl, you got a case. So for a three year, three and a half, almost four, uh, I went back and forth with, um, you know, phone calls, filling up papers, uh, the human rights going to court for me. And um, not only the regulation was removed from the Ontario uh, Athletic Commission, but after that, they removed wrestling completely from the commission. I see. This fan says he's from the Toronto area. He loves your work. After the lockdown and shows come back, we need you back in the area at one of the shows. Team Pog rocked. How did you come up with this Team Pog? Pog <laughs> is like a type of uh, port, I believe. <laughs> uh, actually, me and Jordan had a match at Beyond Wrestling, and um, the promoter decides to put it online on YouTube. And then Jordan, one day, she, she sends me a message. She's like, you know, her match, did you read the comments? I'm like, no. She's like, please go see. <laughs> and then I go, and I'm reading this stuff. Oh, my God, look at those thick girls. Oh, like, it was, like, so, like, I felt like I was reading something from a porno. I was like, oh, my God, what are they saying? And then there's a guy who's like, oh, look at those two pogs. I would love to see them slug each other wearing jeans in the street. I was like, what is pog? <laughs> I didn't know. It's the French in me, I guess. So I start looking, and I'm like, oh, pog, fat-ass white girl. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so... Uh, Drew from Beyond Wrestling is like, I got a team you girls of. Like, you're, you guys together are too over. <laughs> like, you have to be a team. So, 
I was like, okay, we're going to be a team that works out. And so we came up with Team Pog because it was it was so funny. I'm like, might as well use it and play with it because it's like too much. And then at the same time, it's like, it's there, so let's use it. But Pog actually stands for Professional Athletes with Glutes. Now, a couple of months ago, I remember seeing something on your social media that you were offended that I guess some company had sold videos containing your matches and other females to another company and they rebranded them almost like very pornish. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that situation and was it ever resolved? It was actually CZW, um, but not CZW from John Zandig. John Zandig did sell CZW to DJ High for, it's been years now, but I never had a problem with DJ and he's he's been there, uh, like we've known each other for years. So, but it's actually a fan that came up and they were announcing a match versus me and Mercedes as a sweaty cat fight. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And he sends me the link. And it's, yeah, it's people like Leva Bates, myself, Mercedes, Mia Yim. And the way they rebranded the matches was like uh, hot and sweaty girls, hot and heavy, a double deconstruction. And they would actually take like pictures. They would freeze our, our matches like where and when we were bend over and make like posters with that. So it was really promoted as not as women wrestling but as more as a porno cat fight um and and knowing my story and i was like really disappointed is really the the word because i'm like damn dj is like you know what i've been through at ccw to prove that women you know are 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 athletes and stuff and when we uh when we joined wsu when CCW bought the female division. They were like, we're going to make this like the shimmer of the East Coast. We're going to treat you as athlete. This is important. This is serious. So everything we've been promised has been turned around because they sold the footage to a third party. And, and don't get me wrong. Like we know when we perform on the show that they're going to sell footage and they got to make money out of it. It's fine. Um, we, we know that's what's happening. But never did any girl – accept to be presented as a porn star um some of the girls do sexy pictures and stuff and that's their thing but as an athlete when we show up to a show uh, we are there as professional wrestlers and the shows we sign up for were named power breaking barriers um not like hot and sweaty cat fights and that that's why I was like I called them out. I, I I did privately at first, and uh, their answer was like, "Oh, we can't do anything. We sold the footage, and they really uh, excuse my language. They didn't give a shit." So I'm like, "Okay, I, I've waited two months out of because CCW has always been important to me. So I've waited two months to give them. I'm like, they're gonna stop. They know it's bothering us." And they're going to stop, but then they did it anyway. So that's why I called them out publicly. And some of the girl came forward, girls came actually forward with even worse stories of things that were happening in that company. So, um, yeah, at, since then, nothing happened, and I haven't heard anything from them. And, I mean, if nothing's happening, good. Uh, I mean, if you're going to – sell the the matches do so but just use the name that the show was about and use us as wrestlers now you have a different style now but i remember the early 2000s you used to put out some very sexy pictures did you ever have any issues i'm sure you have over your uh, career with obsessed fans her harassing you and so forth i i still have like pictures that are like um sexier uh i don't i don't mind anything uh about you know being sexy or anything you would see in sports illustrated uh nothing that i do is actually naked you might see a side <laughs> once in a while or uh, a lot of girls you'll see an ass cheek or something but i mean if you're comfortable with your body and you want to represent a strong woman that feels great in her body i'm all for it 
but it has to be a personal decision, not somebody who, else who makes it for you. And yes, I didn't, uh, you were talking about my big thighs. <laughs> I have obsessed fans about like, oh my God, I wish you would crush my head like a lemon. <laughs> like a melon, I shouldn't say not a lemon. But uh, yeah, I got some of those. And I, I get like weird. And, like for a while, I even closed all my DMs because it was like too much. People were actually trying to call me on Instagram on their camera. And I was like, whoa. I've always been really um, all about answering all the fans, um, answering their questions. I try to answer all the emails I have. But some of them were like, just looking for someone to chat or even sex chat. I was like, no, 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 that's too much. Uh, and yeah, it's something unfortunately I have to deal with. But I mean, it's it's no different than a singer or, or an actress. They, they get the same thing. Deadly Sins is asking, who is your favorite all-time fem female wrestler and why? Um, there would be a tie between Bull Nakano and Akira Kudo. I love Bull because as a bigger woman, she was moving so quick. She was, she, she had those big, powerful moves and I, I could like relate to her a lot when I started and even more now that I'm bigger <laughs> and Akira Kudo, she was the hardcore uh very intense very solid um wrestler so uh these are definitely the, my, my two uh, favorite women wrestlers now i know you don't really follow the current products or the news but you may have heard of this sonia deville incident mm -hmm. that a fan is asking about what are your thoughts on that whole scary situation that luckily didn't turn into anything worse no, yeah, and it, it could have been it could have been something terrible. Uh, there's actually fans trying to get her own address, and it happened to me and several other wrestlers where there was a there's like a fan sending cards to um, your private own address. Somehow they find it, and of course, you know, it could be just that. But when they know where you live, it's a scary thing. Like we we do have websites, we have stuff where you can reach us when you th there's that line that you don't cross and your own address is one of them. And, um, I, I know of the Sonia situation cause I've read a little bit about it and I heard about it on a podcast and I mean, thank God she wasn't alone when that happened, but it, it could have been terrible because this guy was absolutely obsessed by her and, Right now, she's taking some time off, and I don't blame her because it, it's it's such a scary situation. Um, I mean, I, I wish her the very best. Nobody has, should go through that. And I remember, I think it was Jordan who mentioned that somebody had found her, I think it was her parents' home address. Like, that, that's scary. This is a line you don't, you just don't cross. There's there's the women woman behind the wrestler and there's the wrestler. We're always available at shows, uh, either at the merchandise table or before or after the shows to take pictures and talk to you. Uh, there's emails, there's social media, you can write to us, but that line you just don't cross. There's a couple of fans on here asking what type of music you listen to and your favorite metal band. Uh, of course, <laughs> metal is the, <laughs> the answer of what type of music. Uh, my favorite band of all time is Iron Maiden. I love, I've been listening a lot to Exodus lately. I love Slayer. Um, I, I've been rediscovering Alice Cooper. Um, who else do I love? Uh, my God. Uh, Mortarhead, um, Anthrax, um, King Diamond. I love King Diamond. Uh, yeah, some of those, like, pretty much that's the first bands that come to mind. Did you ever come close to getting into a real fight with a wrestler or a fan? A fan is asking you. A fan or a wrestler? I, I don't think so. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> Maybe I just don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, you seem to have a pretty good reputation and to be pretty easygoing. And I haven't seen much on, on the indie scene around here anyways as far as uh, backstage confrontations. No, I, I 
you know, I, I, I love wrestling and I want it to be fun. It is stressful enough to go out there and perform and do everything right and make sure everyone leaves, you know, the, the venue happy and you gave them everything you had. And I don't want to stress with other <laughs> problems. Like, I just want to go out there and have a good time and give the people out there a good time. There's a few fans on here asking about your pictures in the back. We see Vampiro and, and Vader. Are they two of your favorites? I'm going to guess those are personally autographed photos. The, the, these two are actually my boyfriends. We put all our frames together, but I have uh, a Sherry Martel one. I have a Luna Vachon. That's mine. I got Undertaker, Mima Shimoda. Um, who else? Chris Benoit <laughs> um, and Diamond Dallas Page. That's my boyfriend. We put all their stuff together. Uh, on this side, you can't see it, but I have stuff with uh, Elvira and Doyle from the Misfits and uh, the nerd, <laughs> the nerd, the angry video game nerd too that I met and I love. So uh, yeah, a few autographs here and there. Does that mean your boyfriend is also a wrestler? Is he just a big fan? No, he is a wrestler too. <laughs> I've actually known him for 20 years before we got together. <laughs> really? Yeah. Can you tell us who it is or is it kayfabe? No, it's not kayfabe. It's Judas Judd Cassidy. <laughs> okay. Quebec I'm not wrestler. familiar with him, but I'm guessing it's a Quebec uh, wrestler. Yeah. The indie scene. yeah, he is. Now, Quebec could be still a territory in my opinion it's kind of been killed because there's so many bad promotions out there do you think there's anything that could ever be done again to revive quebec wrestling because it seems like such an untapped market we know there are some good uh companies like the quebec city one and iws in montreal but mm -hmm. there's no real touring company of quebec anymore and there's so many fans that love wrestling uh, right now, my my main concern would be what's going to happen after COVID if there is an after COVID. Because right now, uh, there's I, I think they started to allow a few matches in Ontario and Alberta, but in Quebec, any combat sport you is not happening right now. So, I mean, it's I think it's all going to start from there. Uh, what's going to happen? Are are many people are they going to allow it in the venue? Uh, is it going to be something taped in front of, are we going to go there where like hockey, there's no fan in attendance and we have to produce content from the internet. Um, I don't know. Like I, I, it's, it's really hard to tell with the situation. Uh, I know some promotion, like I said, FLQ is working really hard. IWS has been established and SPW in Quebec is, you know, the, they were doing like awesome with great crowd, but then, how is it going to be when we return? Is there going to be a limit of people who can show up? Is there going to be a limit of wrestlers you can have on your show? Um, it, it, it's scary. I hope, I, I don't think anything will ever go back to normal, or at least the way it used to be, but I hope it's pretty close so we can get those, you know, uh, all those fans in and have those big shows again. There's a few fans on here asking if you saw the Dark Side of the Ring episode with Dino Bravo and what are your thoughts on what happened with him and if you've heard any inside information. Uh, I, I did see it. I don't have any uh, information, unfortunately, when it comes to his story. I thought it was really nice that we finally got to hear from his daughter and his, his wife. Um, it, it's, it's a sad story. I, I, it's... I feel there's like blanks that needs to be filled, but I guess we'll never know. There's someone on here asking, what are your thoughts on the, the 17 plus Joey Ryan accusations that were out there? I don't know if there's any formal charges laid, but I think he was, he holds the record for the most speaking out ac accusation. Yeah, it's, um, I, I, I haven't heard of anything uh, legal when it comes to uh, going to court or anything with him. Uh, I know he produced a video trying to explain himself, and I've seen parts of it. Um, some of it I thought was lame. Some of it is like maybe he's right. You never know. I've known I've known Joey since 2008, 
And when I first met him, he 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 was more of a Magnum uh, PI kind of gimmick, really shy, always been nice to me. Um, so it was when you see that, you're like it, a part of you is like, oh, man, I hope it's not true. But then when you have so many people coming out, you're like, that doesn't look good. And I, I, I believe we should always listen to the victims. And it's. It's disappointing. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to bounce back from that. Yeah, I guess only time will tell. But some places like Mexico, he could probably still go. And he probably wouldn't get that much heat there. Have you ever worked in Mexico? I did. Uh, I started in 2002. And I, I was actually going every two months from 2002 to 2005 or six. I was at the Lucha Libre Femenil Extremo, uh, Extrema Campeona, <laughs> and I was also the Lucha Pop Fam uh, Champion, and I, um, I had a few uh, hardcore matches there, including Intergender versus Joe Leader. I worked for NJX there, and I had the two, um, two tours, mini tours with uh, AAA. Yeah, you actually have a fan on here from Mexico uh, saying hello, so that's pretty cool. But I understand Mexico has been hit the hardest with uh, with COVID, unfortunately, but supposedly they're going to start doing shows too. But it's justice for AutoZone says, greetings from Jalisco, uh, much love from Mexico to Quebec. Oh, thank you so much. Like my, my Mexican fan has always been so loving and supportive. Uh, it's crazy. You go to the ring and they, they run after you and they want to take pictures as you're on your way to the ring and they ask for autographs and they bring you gifts and stuff. They're, they're, uh, you, when you go there, you feel like wrestling is almost like a religion. It's, it's such, it's, it's in their veins. It's in their heart. It's it's such an important part of their culture. And actually, before COVID, I was talking to Lucha Libre Feminil about going back to Monterey. And then we were like, oh, we would love December. But I was like, the border is closed, so I don't know if I can go. So, I mean, maybe I'm going to go back if once this pandemic gets somewhat better. <laughs> Yeah, the border closed is brutal for, for wrestlers without question. Have you ever trained any wrestlers over the years? Uh, here and there, yeah. I, I was uh, training uh, Calamity. Uh, she, I, I brought her to Shimmer too. Casey Diamond was one in there. Uh, Sweet Cherry. Um, I've helped uh, a guy called Volcano here. Um, I did train some people when I was living in um, – in Pennsylvania too, uh, like more on a, I wouldn't say it wasn't like a daily thing there. I would just hop in here and there. I did some seminars too. Um, uh, I've been actually very like enjoying doing uh, theoretical seminars where you actually sit and you explain how to set up a match, how you develop your character. I, I think it's, um, there's a lot of seminars that are awesome in the ring, but I always felt, in my opinion, at least, that something that had been missing in my training when I started was um, that um, that like there's there's information I didn't have like what is a shine, what is a hope, what is how do you set up a go home spot? And I've been I've been loving training people on that and explaining and showing them the little details like that. Now, I understand you have some sort of deal for a book coming out. Could you get into that? I'm sure a lot of the fans on here are going to be interested in hearing about it. Yeah, ECW Press, uh, they reached out to me with uh, Greg Oliver, which is, he's a great author who wrote so many wrestling books. And um, they, yeah, they reached out and um, actually Michael Holmes, the, um, the editor-in-chief, uh, was doing a like a, a some sort of podcast or live interview, and the person asked him, "Whose story do you want to tell?" And he said, "Well, there's two. There's Kevin Steen and Lefisto." And that's when after Greg reached out and he's like, "Hey, maybe it's about time we tell your story because it's it's 25 years of you fighting for women's right and going against all odds and 
this story needs to be told. So going back and forth with him and Michael from ECW Press, I, I decided like, you know what, let's let's do it. And as far as your social media, where can people look you up if they want to follow you? I know you got your Lufisto.com website at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I mean, Lufisto.com, if you can't remember everything, you go there and all the links are there. But I am at Lufisto on Twitter. You got Wounded Al Lufisto on uh, Instagram. I got my Patreon.com slash Lufisto. You'll get matches there, photo shoots, uh, exclusive stories, some, some little things about the upcoming books also. And um, besides that, uh, my Facebook, Facebook.com slash Lufisto. Like I say, if you can't remember all this, you just go on Lufisto.com and all the links are there. Exactly. And Lufisto.com <laughs> is on the screen, this whole shoot interview, so anyone can check it out there. Last fan question I'll ask is, are you a fan of the Malky Brothers? The Malky Brothers? They were NWA enhancement talent. We have oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, I heard the name, but I'm not sure. Like, I'm sorry. I, no, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I would have to watch their stuff a lot more. Well, speaking on behalf of Great North Wrestling, we're really happy to have you as our, our champion. And it's really unfortunate <laughs> that uh, we've had at least two events canceled this year and your, your run couldn't have been better. But let's hope things get going. Um, and to close this off, a possible future challenger – is the angel of death herself, Taylor Hendricks. Could you close this off with uh, some type of promo, maybe a message to Taylor if she wants to come up to Canada and, and try and take that title away from you? Well, Taylor, as soon as the border opens, you're welcome. I beat you once, I'm going to beat you again. Uh -huh.